We are Chris Lee and the artist formerly known as Blaine Gilmer here at Southeastern 14. We are picking every single SEC game for week 10 and for that matter this season. Blaine, this week we get to Florida's visit to Texas A&M, which probably will not be the top game circled on most folks' watch lists this week given the other games around. But that, that aside, interesting matchup in its own right. I don't think either Florida or A&M is probably very happy with how things went a week ago. No, but I mean, there were, I'm kidding with, uh, of course, with the, with the graphic there, but you know, two teams that are kind of having years that are obviously not what they wanted at the, at the start of this season. I think I would argue that Texas A&M more so than Florida, because I think most realistic people, uh, believe that there would be an adjustment period with it being Billy Napier's first year. But Jimbo Fisher really, I mean, this is year five, uh, unbelievable recruiting over the past several years, not just this unbelievable last class that he had and really a, a disappointment when it comes to uh, at least up to this point in the year, the the quarterback development. But, hey, that may have changed because Connor Wegman came in there and, uh, you know, provided a little excitement for that Texas A&M offense, and of course, Anthony Richardson uh, at different times can be as exciting as they come uh, when it comes for Florida's offense, Chris. Yeah, Connor Wegman did look good, but first, let's talk about Anthony Richardson and Florida's offense. And When Florida uh, Florida scores 30 points a game, A&M giving up 21.8. Florida's thrown seven picks. A&M has registered two. Florida's lost three fumbles. A&M has recovered nine which I think leads the SEC. Florida's only registered eight sacks. That doesn't even look right, given Florida's history and tradition on that side of the ball. a has given up 13. Okay, running plays. This counts sacks as pass plays. Gators averaging 6.3 a rush. a and giving up 5.3. Florida averaging 7.6 a pass play. a and only giving up 5.3. Florida's kind of a sneaky good run team. And Blaine, a and has had fits lately stopping the run against anybody that can run it with any semblance, it seems like to me. Yeah, and, and that's a that's a surprise. You know, we – we Yeah. The talent that they have up front, I know that some of them are young uh, freshmen like Walter Nolan and, and people of that that nature in that, in that freshman, uh, that elite recruiting class they had, right? But – so much talent up front, even even from years prior that is still there and have not been able to stop the run when needed uh, at times. And I, I just tell you what, that's not a good recipe when you're going up against this Florida team because, like you said, uh, they, they have been very productive uh, in, in the run game. A lot of that comes from explosive runs uh, with Anthony Richardson, but – you know, Montreal Johnson, 6.4 yards per carry. Trevor Etienne has been one of the surprises in the SEC this year, Chris. I don't think many people expected him to do a whole lot for Florida when he came on, but the freshman is – you just can't tackle the young man. He, it seems like you can't square him up, and he always finds ways, whether it's on kick returns or uh, running the ball out of the backfield for Florida, that I think they can be very, very productive. So – I think uh, that is something that Florida is definitely going to want to do well early. And then that, of course, helps out Anthony Richardson in the play action game and also taking those shots uh, deep with with one on ones as well. So for Texas A&M, you know, just have to I would say, even though that that Anthony Richardson does have a big arm, I think you've got to load the box and say, you know, Richardson, you are you're you're not going to escape on us and Florida, you're not going to just run the ball. Uh, down our throats, you're going to have to beat us through the air, and I think that's what A and M will, will have to do uh, in order to take care of business defensively. Okay, before we talk about the other side of the matchup, a shout out to our partners at Stakes. That's S T A K E S. We make predictions every week in the Stakes app. You can let us know if you agree or disagree with those picks. So go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Sign up for stakes. Place your predictions on our questions. If you use the invite code Southeastern14, when you sign up, you'll get a double welcome bonus. It's not a betting app. It's just a predictions app. It's fun. It costs you nothing to join. You can win stuff. You can brag when you, when you beat us. What's not to like here? 
support our partners at stakes and have a good time while you're doing that. Okay. When the Aggies have got the ball, like you said, they may have found something last week with Connor Wegman, who looked really good. Uh, A&M only scoring 21.8 points a game. Florida giving up 29.9. A&M's thrown six picks. Florida's picked off eight. A&M has been sacked 17 times. Florida's got 13. And in, let's see. Rushing plays, adjusting for sacks. Florida is averaging 5.1 a carry. Excuse me, giving up 5.1 a carry and giving up 7.4 pass where A&M gets 6.2 per pass play. By the way, obviously the sack number I cited earlier, that was Florida's giving up eight. I got that confused. So let's set the record straight there. Anyway, enough of my rambling. What do we make of this side of the ball? Uh, really, it looked like a, uh, some, some renewed life in that Texas A&M uh, – Offense, you know, of course, with Connor Wegman, twenty-eight of forty-four, maybe not as efficient as you want to be, but let you know, hey, the the end results. He had three hundred thirty-eight yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Huge for a freshman making his first start. I know it's against a Ole Miss defense that uh, is not the greatest in the world, admittedly, but still a a big big kind of hurdle for him in his first SEC. Uh, start and then you know when it comes down to it he had that that home crowd home environment uh and i believe if i'm correct i haven't even double checked i believe he'll be at home again against florida correct yep yep so he's gonna have that he's gonna have that comf that comfortable feel that that um you know environment now that he's played already one time in and here's the thing that impressed me chris is that he was able to complete the ball to uh, seven different receivers in this. And that's that's usually young guys that get their first start. They kind of lock in on one guy and things like that. But he's he's distributing the ball. He's, he's getting it to the different parts of the offense. So I think Florida, uh, you mentioned, they give up over five yards of carry. I think Devon A. Chain is going to be important in this one. He averaged 5.5 in their loss to, to Ole Miss. Got to gotta keep the the – maybe increase the tempo. That's something Georgia tried to do to Florida at times because they, they like to rotate guys because they don't have a lot of, a lot of depth, but they had like to keep mm-hmm. fresh bodies because uh, even though the, the lack of depth, but they got 415 pounders out there. So if you can get them a little winded, that might help you out uh, a little bit. So um, I think that you're going to want to see Jimbo Fisher is going to want to try to run that football early. Uh, and then Connor Wegman, you know, provide some excitement. Florida, they just allow a lot of yards. So it's, I think this is a potential um, to be a, a, a high scoring game, honestly, between these two offenses. Well, if you look at what the teams give up and score, the over under should have been more like 51 and a half. Uh, Vegas has made it as we're doing this. Last, I looked on Sunday night, 54 and a half, AM favored by three. That implies a final score of 29-26 in the Gators' favor. What are we thinking here? You know, uh, when it when it comes down to it, you got two offensive-minded guys in, in Jimbo and Billy Napier. Uh, you know, maybe embattled wouldn't be the right word for Napier right now because I don't think people uh, it expected as much the first year. But still, you know, anytime you lose uh, 42 to 20 to your rival, Georgia, the the Florida fan base is not real happy. So they're going to want – and they lost out on a big recruit this week as well. So they're going to want to wash that taste out of their mouth and try to get it uh, get it corrected against Texas A&M. And then Jimbo Fisher, he's – I don't know, you know, how realistic you can say it is, Chris, in terms of buyout and all that kind of stuff, but he's squarely – that seed is starting to percolate a little bit. It's getting a little getting a little warm uh, over there. So he desperately needs to to win this game against a, a Florida team. I I happen to think that with Florida not being able to get that pass pass rush this year, that not being able to get sacks, I think Connor Wigman's going to be able to be comfortable again. And yes, as as bad as it's been, I think Texas A and M uh, just move is going to move the ball too well and for florida to be able to get enough opportunities i think they they outpace florida in this one and and i like them to win uh by a touchdown 
Yeah, I mean, look, I, I struggle to pick AM. I, I just think the weight of expectations have come crashing down on them. Uh, you had the discipline issues last week. You got the all all the stuff that's been well rehearsed. At the same time, I, I, Wegman is a talented kid. I feel like they started to figure something out on that side of the ball. Um, no, they're they're allowed a ton of rushing yards. Uh, so I, I kind of like the over on this one, which really feels strange to say with the football game that AM is involved in. But I, I'm going to go with what I saw. I like AM I, I, to win, and I think I like them to cover, Blaine. Um, is as weird as that feels to say, because that's it's not been the thing to do all year. But here's here's another thing in AM's AM's defense. And AM is a a popular pinata to bash around the SEC right now. But here's one common denominator in a lot of AM's struggles. AM had a game in Arlington against Arkansas at Mississippi State, at Alabama, by week, at South Carolina, and then it comes home finally, but it faces an Ole Miss team that's lost one game. So, yeah, A&M has underachieved. A&M has been its own worst enemy, but it's also played some a lot of games away from home. Uh, and the one time it did come home recently, it played a really good Ole Miss team that was a bad matchup. So, um, if, if you got some reservations about picking AM, which I still do, I think one that's one thing that's worth mentioning that, that maybe makes me feel a little better about that. And you never know what's going to happen when it comes to Texas AM. So, my I would say my confidence level in my pick is like 60%, but I'm going to go with it. AM wins. I think Connor Wegman. Gets his gets his first uh, win there, and uh, Evan Stewart looks unbelievable. So, um, him and Moussa Muhammad, the third. So, I don't think I, I just don't think Florida's defense is is very good right now. So it's uh, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, one thing I for, I usually do this before now. I forgot to add. Florida is giving up thirty nine, or excuse me, Florida is getting penalized thirty nine yards a game. That's one of the best marks in the league. A and M penalized fifty one yards. That's about average. Uh, FEI ranks the special teams as of a week ago. I don't think these have updated. Florida at 12, AM at 21. So both teams very good there. Strength to schedule, Florida 39 on Jeff Sagarin, AM 11. So with that, uh, we are Southeastern 14. He's Blaine Gilbert. I'm Chris Lee. Thank you for watching. We are previewing every single SEC game this week and in this football season. Best way to catch that, hit that subscribe button. That also lets you know. We're doing our basketball content, and there's a lot of that coming this week, too. Thank you for watching. Thank you to our sponsor, Stakes. We will see you again soon at Southeastern 14.